You know what's kind of interesting? When I made my video about why I code on Linux instead of Windows, there were a handful of people coming to the defense of Windows. But it ultimately begs the question, were those people even real? Or were they bots created by Microsoft to push back on anything Linux? And not only that, but why did the office of Bill Gates reach out to me and send me this? Are they actually trying to teach me of how to avoid a climate disaster? Or is sending me this all a ruse to try to get me to quit trashing Microsoft in favor of Linux? Well, guess what, Bill Gates? Joke's on you because I don't even know how to read. Okay, let's read the Halloween documents. If you don't know what the Halloween documents are, there are 11 documents that occurred in the late 90s going into the early 2000s showing how much of a threat Linux is to Microsoft. It started off with a few leaked documents, confidential memos containing a lot of their worries about open source software and Linux, as well as a few ways to try to take down Linux and, and, and open source software as well. And then a few of the documents were Microsoft addressing the previous documents that had leaked. They kind of doubled down on what they did, but like halfway doubled down. And then they contradicted themselves later on. And then they just did a whole lot of petty corporate stuff. And they were called the Halloween documents because they were leaked around Halloween. I love humans, we're just so dang clever. It all starts in 1998 with the very first document being leaked titled Open Source Software, A New Development Methodology. Whereas the overall idea of this memo right here, actually to directly quote a news article at a time, the overall idea of that memo was to stress that free software can meet or exceed the quality of commercial programs and describes it as potentially serious threat to Microsoft. And just to note, before you get all skeptical, oh, conspiracy theory, this and that, this was authenticated multiple times by Microsoft. Like this is a real memo and I don't think it was supposed to be leaked. It was written by Vinod Vallopalil around August 11th, 1998 and requested by senior VP Jim Alchin for the attention of senior VP Paul Merritt. I just wanted to say that because if this is your first time hearing about the Halloween uh, documents, Maybe you are not sure how real this, like these are completely real, authentic. So just take that bit of information throughout this video. So with this document here, the very first one that was linked, it was suspected a little bit early on that it was leaked on purpose by Microsoft. This is actually a tactic called the FUD tactic to instill fear, uncertainty, and doubt into users in this case, into users of open source software as well as Linux. And that theory kind of made sense because Microsoft loves FUD. Why do I think this? Because they've done it in the past. And by in the past, I mean even in the past when referencing this, which happened in 1998. Earlier in the 90s, MS cheated in DOS war. So basically what happened, there's a small company called Caldera, which published DRDOS, a competing product uh, uh, to MS DOS. MS standing for Microsoft. So obviously Microsoft's product. So what did Microsoft do? They accepted the friendly competition. <laughs> No, they didn't. <laughs> According to the documents, Microsoft put a bogus error message in the Windows 3.1 beta to make users believe that it wasn't compatible with DRDOS, which in turn would cause users to buy MS-DOS. Big brain moves by Microsoft here. And you could think that that was speculative and maybe that's not why they did it. Well. According to a Microsoft executive, Brad Silverberg, in something he allegedly wrote in a 1992 email cited, to, cited by Caldera, in referencing to when that error message pops up, what the guy is supposed to do is feel uncomfortable. And when he has bugs, suspect that the problem is DRDOS and then go out and buy MS-DOS. So while Microsoft loves the FUD tactics and this could be a potential way to go about that, it's kind of widely known that they didn't intentionally leak, intentionally leak it because this article literally just praises free and open source software. And I don't know about you, but if I'm trying to discourage someone or scare someone away from a product, I'm not going to say, yeah, this product's really great. Uh, it's actually kind of better than ours and it's free. I'm just going to make an entire YouTube video about them shedding light on how manipulative and distrusting they are. And here are a few key quotes from the original, the very first Halloween document. And remember, this is Microsoft talking about this. This is Microsoft talking about open source software, talking about Linux. This is from Microsoft themselves. OSS, open source software, poses a direct short-term revenue and platform threat to Microsoft, particularly in server space. <laughs> well, that became true. However, going back to the FUD tactics, OSS is long-term credible. FUD tactics 
cannot be used to combat it. I, I really like this part. Linux and other OSS advocates are making a progressively more credible argument that OSS software is at least as, ro as robust, if not more, than commercial alternatives. Linux can win as long as services, protocols, are commodities, which is actually uh, pretty critical to one of the points that they made in this article. So they actually had a section about beating Linux, beat Unix. And one of these is pertaining to that fact that if there's standardization of these commodities, well, it makes that transition to Linux a whole lot easier. However, this is kind of what they talk about in here. Say they have .doc files. Those files come from Microsoft Word, .doc stands for document. It's standardized. That's what you're gonna use. That's what LibreOffice uses, OpenOffice, uh, Microsoft Word, everything. However, what if Windows, what if Microsoft were to make their dot .doc and the like, those types of different server infrastructures and commodity networks and everything like that, effectively proprietary? Or in a way, basically make it in a manner that is incredibly difficult to make compatible with Linux. Well, I don't know about you, but if you know there's this big transition going on and people are saying, hey, go over to Linux. Well, if I get sent a Word document from my colleague and I can't even open it because I'm on Linux, that poses a problem and that's exactly what Microsoft wants. And I'm talking like this is happening right now. This I was like three years old when this first started, but this is a pretty cool story. And cool in the sense of like historical, not cool. Like, like that wasn't cool that Microsoft did all of this, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so in essence, the very first Halloween document really showed how scared Microsoft was of free and open source software and Linux. But just wait until you see the second Halloween document, which was another document leaked shortly after this initial one titled Linux OS Competitive Analysis, the next Java VM. Whereas the whole entire essence of this is that, um, Microsoft has a secret crush on Linux and leaking this document is basically equivalent of you accidentally texting your crush how much you like her. I mean, just look what it says. And again, this is Microsoft talking about Linux. This isn't Linux talking about Linux, which is what you would probably think if you didn't know the context because it's so positive about Linux. Here are some of the main points. Everything in red is pulled directly out of the memo. Linux represents a best of breed Unix that is trust, trusted in mission critical applications and due to its open source code has long term credibility, which exceeds many other competitive OSs, including Windows. A big problem for Microsoft is that most of the primary apps that people require when they move to Linux are already available for free, which allows a Windows user to transfer over to a Linux environment a whole lot easier, which is exactly what they say right here. <laughs> and my favorite point of all, consumers love it. I don't know why that isn't the tagline for Linux. Someone, maybe one of y'all, you need to submit a pull request. Just edit the readme file on the Linux GitHub repository, which is GitHub's owned by Microsoft. Microsoft still wins in the end. Anyway, submit a pull request. We're right at the top of the readme file. It says, consumers love it, in quotes, said by Microsoft. And probably one of the most critical points when it comes to Microsoft's bottom line is it says, note, however, that Compaq and Dell PC manufacturers merely have to credibly threaten Linux adoption in order to push for lower OEM OS pricing. That is saying that if these two companies, PC manufacturers that ship out with Microsoft say, and we're thinking about Linux adoption and, and, and shipping our PCs with Linux. Well, you know what's gonna happen is Microsoft is gonna drop their prices to make sure that they're actually competitive, which if Linux is free, that's a little difficult, but yeah. Very solid negotiating tactic for Compaq and Dell. I'm interested to see if they actually did that. Comment down below if you know. Let's move on to the third Halloween document, which this is the very first uh, reaction. Well. Microsoft's reaction to the Halloween memorandum. We're basically in the same sentiment. Microsoft doubles down, but also doesn't take full ownership. It just kind of like half it, half, half ass it. Because this is basically what Microsoft said in their response to the two leaked documents. It is routine and appropriate for Microsoft, and we would assume all other vendors to research, write about, and assess all competitors, both from a business model point of view and from a technical point of view. 
Sure, that's a solid point. But what did Eric Raymond have to say? Everything that he says is in green. Later on, it's it's tan. And he agreed. He, yes, it is routine for that. However, it, what's not quite so routine is to see the discussion imply a cold-blooded acceptance of methods including FUD tactics and dirty tricks such as decommoditizing open standards into monopolistic lock-in devices. So FUD tactics. They said it wasn't going to work against open source software, but it was floated around because obviously they have done it in the past and that's just kind of what it proves and then dirty tricks such as decommoditizing that's the whole document file type thing trying to make their stuff so non-compatible with anything other than windows so that's where they kind of doubled down where like they didn't say oh no that wasn't us that wasn't us. they kind of admitted to it but this is that half-assed part it is not the official position by microsoft on linux it is a technical analysis written by an engineer in staff capacity and designed to encourage discussion and <laughs> I could add my own little tidbits here, but let me just read what Eric says. Written by a staff engineer with contributions, endorsements, and reviews by two program managers, the senior VP in charge of NT development, and two members of the eight-person executive committee. And that executive committee, mind you, I guess it's called Microsoft's Politburo, I'm not sure, but basically the executive committee answers only to Bill Gates. Or translation, all the executives every higher up even the owner bill gates they knew about this memo they agreed with this memo so don't try to say it's not it's not the official position of microsoft no it's just not the way your pr team wrote it because this was leaked instead of y'all putting anything out there yourselves let's talk about the fourth halloween document when software things were rotten the whole entire thing is just a satire piece by eric raymond touching on the fact that ed muth a Microsoft Group marketing manager, uh, actually a Microsoft uh, executive, calling open source developers Robinhood. And I'm not sure if he knows this, but him saying that automatically makes him the sheriff of Nottingham. I'm not sure how familiar he is with Robinhood, but that means he's the bad guy. But we're not gonna go through the whole entire thing in this. That's, I mean, it's literally a whole entire story. Halloween document number five, the FUD begins. So. In the very first Halloween document, they said, OSS is long-term credible, FUD tactics cannot be used to combat it. However, when it comes to the fifth, just about uh, five months later, <laughs> the good old Sheriff of Nottingham, Ed Muth, decided he wanted to throw out a FUD piece on Linux, calling it a weak value proposition, saying it has no long-term development roadmap. This is coming from a company that can't seem to decide how many versions of Windows 9X will intrude between now and the much delayed promised land of Windows 2000. <laughs> Come on. And then we also get some whining about the lack of fairness in media coverage. Well, of course, who are you gonna like more? Robin Hood or the Sheriff of Nottingham? Of course, Robin Hood's gonna get better media coverage. And then there's more that said, but this was the typical FUD tactic that they said wasn't gonna work. So I'm curious to see if it does. Let's fast forward to the sixth Halloween document, the fatal anniversary, where they decided they're not gonna do an exact uh, di direct FUD piece on Linux. Or are they? So between the fifth and the sixth Halloween document, a few things have happened. The original author of the Halloween documents quit Microsoft to go work at a Linux-based startup. <laughs> I thought that was funny. In the first Linux IPO rocketed Red Hat software to a $6 billion market cap. And then the few things that have stayed the same, Windows is still buggy and insecure and crash prone. Windows 2000 still isn't shipping and Microsoft is still whining and making excuses. And then our Sheriff Nottingham, he was quiet, but then comes out a piece. Then comes out a piece, which is really why there's this six Halloween document, which is addressing the piece that came out. This isn't a leaked document or anything like that, but a piece came out by the Gartner Group. It was an objective study by independent Gartner that slammed Linux. They actually had a series of five reports slamming Linux and predicting that its appeal would fade once the inevitable Service Pack 1 for Windows 2000 came out. And these reports quickly spawned Linux is doomed articles like this one, which is the dead link, unfortunately. But these objective studies by independent Gartner included the following small print at the end. Microsoft Web Letter is published by Microsoft. Additional editorial material supplied by Gartner Group, Inc. 1999. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Let's move on to the seventh Halloween document. And this is basically, in essence, Microsoft saying that, um, hey, FUD ain't working. Well, guess what, Microsoft? 
That's what you initially said all the way back in the first Halloween document, that flood tactics cannot be used. But then just five months later, you said, um, you know, we're gonna try it anyway. And then uh, let's try it under an alias. And now you're saying that it didn't work. Not only did it not work, but it backfired. Microsoft's flood attacks on open source software have not only failed, they have backfired strongly enough to show up in Microsoft's own market research as a problem. Sweet, sweet justice. When a big company tries to bully this nice, free, open source software, and it just doesn't work out as planned. However, Microsoft is still... Now we're back to Microsoft accidentally leaking documents again. So this is four years after the original Halloween documents were released. Halloween document number eight, doing the damage control dance. So what is this saying? <laughs> it's basically Microsoft saying, okay, every time that someone, whether it be a big company or, or a government or whatever for servers, for operating system, doesn't matter. If they ever say that they're gonna be using Linux, we need to have a plan in place. We need to know what to do. Every time I think of this, I just think of the scene in the office where Dwight lights something on fire just to make sure that people know the proper protocol and then everything just hits the fan. Everyone goes crazy, they're freaking out. And I feel like every time there's some sort of Linux announcement in this regard, that Microsoft employees just go crazy. <laughs> And you can read here, we must be prepared to respond to announcements such as this one by the Japan government or prior announcements in Peru, Germany, etc. But we need to respond to them quickly and with facts to counter the perception that large institutions are deploying OSS or Linux. Counter the perception. Perception. The ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through senses. So they're just they're just trying to shut it up. And this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets kind of, not tricky, but crazy. So Halloween document number nine, it ain't necessarily SEO. And Halloween document number 10, follow the money, are related to an instance where the SCO group sued IBM for $1 billion, claiming that the source code IBM wrote and donated as a contribution into Linux contained SCO's Unix system five proprietary code or something like that. And that Linux is now an unauthorized derivative of Unix. And not only that, but uh, they want all Linux end users to pay license fees. So not only are they going after Linux and IBM, they're also going after the end user. So if you're skeptical, this could scare you away from Linux. But far, so um, this is SEO group. I don't know what they have to do with Microsoft. I thought you are talking about Microsoft and Windows. Yeah, Microsoft paid SEO $86 million in support of them attacking Linux. $86 million on, under the table too. Bro, this, <laughs> this stuff is so petty. Oh, and you know what was the biggest wrench that was thrown into this when I was reading through it? The SEO group was formerly known as Caldera. May sound familiar to you because we talked about them earlier in this video. They were the owners of DR-DOS years prior that Microsoft screwed over in favor of MS-DOS. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, the last, the 11th, the final Halloween document, Get the FUD. That is a play on words of Get the Facts which was a uh, like a roadshow campaign thing by Microsoft. Ah uh, yes, right here. Microsoft's Get the Facts Roadshow in Great Britain. There's a lot more to talk about with this as well as with all of the other Halloween documents, but let's just talk about a few things. So Microsoft decided they're, they're, they wanted to change their tone just a little bit. So they have abandoned using the open source is intellectual property stuff, which was advice given to them by their own survey group two years ago that the tactic was backfiring badly. They've quit claiming that Microsoft products are technically superior. Instead, they talk up transition costs. So, you know, if you use Windows now, it's gonna take a lot of money and a lot of power and a lot of time to transfer everything over to Linux. You probably don't wanna do it. And they stopped talking about innovation. But a few things that they did talk about in this uh, Get the Facts Roadshow in Great Britain that uh, they claim that Linux isn't free. They're probably claiming this because there were a few like, uh, packages, I guess some distros or, or something that were commercially available, you know, for a little bit of money. So uh, if you speak lawyerese, then okay, Linux isn't free sometimes, 
when it's provided by certain people. They're pretending that a shared source is the same as open source. Again, they're making a big deal about the migration costs of moving to Linux and then use the forced forced to son of a bitch. All right, I understand it has an ER on the end, but get my name out of here. But they, they, they're trying to claim that Linux is insecure. <laughs> insecure, that's ironic. And then they're belittling the quality of the tool set available on Linux, which Okay. Remember, the Halloween documents are 20 years old with the first coming out in 1999 and this last one coming out in 2004. But if you didn't know about the Halloween documents, now you know. And the next time you want to defend Windows over Linux to me, make sure you know what you're talking about. And that brings me to my final point. How in the world do I get all the way off Windows? I use Adobe CC and I game. Don't say wine, don't say any of the incredibly obvious answers because I've tried everything and it just doesn't work just right. Or just screw everything Unix because it was initially designed as a virus to handicap competitors operating systems when it was being developed in Bell Labs in the 1970s. I'm just kidding. That was just a conspiracy. Maybe created by Microsoft in order to eliminate competitors because they also started in the 1970s. 